So a fair while ago, I created a video that was of me tutorializing how to create a film of a PowerPoint presentation that you can export using PowerPoint itself. Now, I initially created that for my colleagues at work as a tutorial for them, uh, given that they're using Windows computers and the Windows PowerPoint version, um, which was excellent for that purpose. But I've got a lot of questions since about how did I make the video that I actually made and how do you make a PowerPoint presentation look the way that I did um, in your video. So uh, just to refresh your memory, that video looked like this. But once you got sorted how you're going to record your audio, to add audio to your presentation, you locate the slideshow toolbar up at the top here. And you've got this tab here called record slideshow. When you press this tab, it'll immediately start recording. And what will come up is a view that looks like this, and it's already capturing what I'm saying. Now, before I get too much into how I actually filmed that myself, the very first thing I want to say is this video is going to tutorialize how I did it, not necessarily what the easiest way to get a very similar effect is. Because you can get a very similar effect to what I did by using a program called screencast o -Matic, which I'll leave in the description, um, which is a very, like, it's a fantastic program. I use it all the time in feedback videos and things that I do for my students. But I guess the power of editing within that program is limited to an extent compared to using the program that I used, which is a paid software of Premiere Pro um, from Adobe. So if I was to explain what I sort of did, Essentially what I did was I captured the screen, the video of um, you know whatever I was doing on the computer screen at the time using a software program called QuickTime because I'm on Mac, but any screen capture program will work. I then filmed myself separately using a separate camera like I am now, and then put it all together using Adobe Premiere Pro. So essentially let's just start with um, how I set up the screen capture at first. So basically the first thing that you need to do is you need to open some kind of screen capture software. Um, if you're using a Mac like I am, you can use QuickTime Player and open that up. And once you open QuickTime Player up, you go to this menu called New Screen Recording. Now, because I'm currently recording the computer screen now, you can't actually, well, I can't select it again. But as long as you're not recording the screen like I am, uh, you'll be able to select that option. And you'll have a little drop down that comes like with a record button and you just press that record button, press somewhere on the screen and now it's filming the entire uh, screen and everything that I'm doing. And what it produces is it produces a screen like this um, where it will have anything on the computer screen but it won't have me um, or you know the person that's presenting. You'll be able to hear me, uh, but you won't be able to see me. So if you're looking for an effect that's more like this, you need to have a different setup. So this is where I was filming myself with a different camera and then combine the two video recordings together to um, present it in this format. So essentially what I then went and did once I was capturing the screen recording and I had my camera capturing me, is I discussed the tutorial that I went through. But if you're after just the presentation part, you just open up PowerPoint, you open up the presentation and you start delivering your PowerPoint presentation like I've got here. You can go through your slides and start talking about various things. So for example, in this slide here, you can actually see the setup that I've got right now uh, with the camera that's recording um, me. So I'm sitting here somewhere uh, and that's the laptop that I'm using that I'm presenting this PowerPoint on. Um, and once you've finished, you just end the recording um, and end the screen capture that can be found in the top toolbar up in here. Now, something that you didn't get to see there just because when I stopped the film capture, it stopped capturing the screen, um, is it allowed me to save my screen capture as a video file. So I've just captured it just in here. Uh, if I open it up, hopefully it loads. There we go. Um, and you can see now that I've got the video, uh, if I'm clicking through, you can see that it's just captured whatever I was talking about on the screen 
uh, that I can now load into a different program, which is Adobe Premiere Pro, and edit this and combine this with the camera footage that I'm talking into now. So now I'm gonna just cut over to Adobe Premiere Pro to show you how I put this stuff together. So what I've got here is I've got Adobe Premiere Pro loaded up and I've got all the video files and other files that I need just up in the top left here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how I use this particular program to sync all my files up together and then edit the size and adjust it all to get the black bar type effect um, and the multi-video type effect that I had with this you know, area, that PowerPoint tutorial video that I created before. So essentially the first thing I need to do is load up everything into my timeline down here by clicking and dragging it. Now I am familiar with the order, with the order that I really need to put things in to make sure that the main cam, which is the one that is capturing me, is on top as the highest layer. I also capture my audio separately. So I capture my audio via my iPhone through a lavalier that I synchronize everything to. So I put that audio track as audio track one. I highlight everything. I right click and press synchronize, which is what brought this up. And then I just want to hit the OK to synchronize it to audio track one. And what that has now done is it synced it all in line with this audio track here, which was my main audio track. So if I was to play a section of it, let's say this section just in here. Basically, you can sort of see that everything's back in line, all the audio tracks are together, but I will need to get rid of, so by right clicking and unlinking, I've just unlinked all the files. I need to get rid of all the audio files that I don't need. So these blue ones down here. And then just for cleanup sake, I tend to synchronize these together uh, not synchronize, link these together initially, just so I can adjust them all at once and have them there like that. So what I'm gonna be doing with this first part of the video is I'm actually just gonna have a big video of myself here, uh, which you've, if you're watching this, you've probably already seen. So it's this part here where I've got the screen capture sections that I actually need to adjust it so I've got a smaller version of myself. Uh, generally up in the top right is where I put it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna crop this video file just where the screen capture part is. And what I do is I actually get these video template um, files that I've made separately. I've made these in Photoshop. So I've just click and drag the one that I used for the PowerPoint one that I originally made. What it is, is just a transparent section with some black bars in here to create a template that I can move my video around in. Um, you know, my multiple videos that I've got here. So obviously I'm gonna move myself into that top right corner. But for this video, I'm actually not gonna include the full black bar. So I've created a separate one for this one that looks a bit more like this. So that's where I'm gonna put the image of me. So this main camera footage here. And behind it right now is the screen capture footage that you just can't see just yet. So what I need to do is I need to uh, select the main footage camera, which is this one just in here. And I need to adjust the size of me to shrink me down into this section here and to move it. So that's the scale section of the effect controls area. And I'm just gonna click and drag this scale to roughly where I think is suitable. So about there, I reckon. And then you just start click and dragging these uh, sliders here to move the image around the screen. You can double click in here and move it that way. I, I've gotten used to just using these sliders, so that's where I tend to adjust things from myself. And you just position yourself roughly where you think it's um, needed. Now, the last bit, I need to get rid of this part of the camera footage that's just in here. To do that, I need to add the crop into it. So. I'd obviously searched it previously, but down the effects tab, if you type in crop up here, you just want the transform form crop that's just in here and add it to your effect controls. And now I wanna crop the left-hand side of it. So if you click and drag this, you're able to crop it to the size that you would like. I think that was 27. Yep, that works quite nicely. So now what I've got here, if I just play it for a moment, but basically is I've got the video footage 
in sync with the screen recording that's behind it and I've got it shrunk down to the top right corner so you can see what's on my computer screen. The other, final thing that I need to do is, and this is more because of how my Mac's capturing and the screen resolutions and the video size resolution. You're not seeing my full screen in the Mac right now. So if I was to just click this and start dragging the scale, oops, let's just make sure I only click this one. Let me unlink it for a sec. Um, and just start changing the scale of this. You can see here that, um, you know, I'm missing a lot of the screen that I need. So because the, the scale is quite off, I tend to not do a uniform scale. So I untick this uniform scale box and I know what figures I tend to use for this. So for the height, I tend to use 51.5. For the width, I tend to use 57.5. And that tends to stretch it just a little bit on the width but fits the 1080p ratio quite well, so I can see my entire screen, which is what I want. So now if I play it, you can see. So basically the first thing that you need to do is you need to open. You can see that I've got everything back in sync. You can see that I've got myself in the top right corner, um, and you can see everything that's on the screen that is being videoed, like captured. So in essence, what this does is it creates a video file now that you can capture whatever's on your screen. If that's PowerPoint and the PowerPoint presentation, you can use it for that. The advantage of this is though, that you can capture whatever is on your screen and have you up in that corner talking about whatever it is that you want to talk about. So it's not just for PowerPoint that this is limited to, it's for anything. So I hope this gives you an idea of how I went about creating that video. Uh, it has been a couple of years since I did create that video. Um, but essentially there are easier ways that you can use if you just want to do it really quickly. Like I said, Screencast-O-Matic, I've got a link of it in the description. Check that out because it does everything automatically for you. But if you do want a bit more editing power, if you want to add logos or do something different, uh, then you're probably going to need an editing suite such as Adobe Premiere Pro. There are others out there. Uh, where you can synchronize things together, but that is a little bit more involved in its process.